Captain Nat himself attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He obviously had a bent for mathematics, and he was, um, at the age of about uh, 18, he was asked by the Boston Yacht Club to develop the formula for handicapping yachts. And he worked out the time allowance tables, which were used for more than a century by the then North American Yacht Racing Union, which became U.S. Sailing. And uh, he had to do that, of course, using logarithms and a good many calculations by hand, but it produced a set of tables that were the basis for all yacht handicapping in America for at least 100 years. And I have to add an uh, interesting uh, sideline to that. When I myself was studying at MIT uh, 100 years later or so, I decided I'd recalculate what Captain Yad had done uh, back in the 1800s. It took me about three seconds on an IBM computer, and the result was identical. As a consequence of that, uh, Captain Nat was made an honorary member of the Boston Yacht Club. And uh, after the Reliance won the America's Cup in 1903, he was made an honorary member, life member of the New York Yacht Club. He went to work uh, for the famous Corliss Eng Engine Company of Providence. Corliss was the um, designer and builder of the finest large steam machinery in America. And uh, early on, evidently, uh, Nat Herosoff was more interested in mechanical engineering, particularly in steam, than he was in uh, the design and construction of uh, boats and yachts. He was assigned uh, with one of the foremen of uh, Corliss to a project of great importance. They built a huge steam engine, a flywheel, I think it was about 25 or 30 feet in diameter, to power a uh, centennial exhibition in Philadelphia commemorating the 100th anniversary of the Declaration of Independence in 1876. And while the President of the United States and the President of Mexico were out on the floor opening some impressive steam valve to stop this steam engine up to power the exposition, the shaft of that uh, handle led through a wall to nothing. And it was actually Captain Nat down underneath who really turned on the steam to get the <laughs> engine going to power that exposition. While he worked for Corliss, he moonlighted for his um, older brother, J.B. Herosoff. And it would be very remiss of me not to give you some mention of Mr. J.B. I was talking this evening with uh, curator John Palmieri, who explained to me his recent research in Texas, which revealed the aggressiveness of J.B. Uh, going out and seeking work with the Navy, and I'm sure he was the same way with the New York yachtsman who came to Bristol for uh, yachts to be built. And uh, J.B. was really the driving force of the company. He was the founder before his brother, younger brother, got involved much. And um, he was the president. And even though he was blind, he um, ran the business, did the estimating, hired the people, fired them, paid them, and uh, kept it all together. He was the most remarkable man. Being German, he was also a bit stubborn. And I have, as I was a youth, I heard a story about Mr. J.B.'s stubbornness, which I hope is true, but I'm not sure it is. It came from my maternal grandfather, uh, Captain Halsey Chase. Both my grandfathers were called captains. And Captain Chase said that uh, the rumor was that Mr. J.B. was guided down on the piers one time by his uh, 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 grandchildren, by a couple of uh, ladies, and normally he knew just what he was doing. He had a cane and he could feel his way and he could, uh, as a blind man can do, he had greater senses than we do. But uh, according to my grandfather Chase, he got disoriented and instead of walking down the pier, he was walking at right angles and his um, young um, grandchildren were not too attentive. So one of the workmen yelled at him, according to Captain Chase and said, Mr. J.B., stop, stop, you're getting off the edge then. And the uh, story is he muttered under his breath, damn, if anybody going to tell me what to do, and he walked off into the water and they had to rescue him. <laughs> I, I hope it's true. 
I'm not sure. Um, following on from what John will be, uh, what uh, John Palmieri will be telling you in the next lecture that Dyer has mentioned, uh, one of the earliest things that the company did when uh, Captain Nat had joined in it in uh, 1887 was to build so-called spa torpedo boats, not only for the U.S. Navy, but for the navies of England and Russia. And these were fascinating, long, narrow boats, a little less than 60 feet long, and probably only uh, somewhat less than 10 feet wide. And that was before the invention of self-propelled torpedoes. A torpedo then was a long pole extended from the bow with a large blob of dynamite. And the idea was that uh, uh, rather hazardous duty, the um, officers and crew would take the uh, spout torpedo boat uh, in, stealth, in stealth up to the uh, side of an enemy ship and poke this um, torpedo near the waterline and blow a hole in the ship so it would sink. And if that didn't work, they were to back off, turn around, and there was another one in the stern of the spa torpedo boat, and they'd try again backing into the place. We don't think that this exercise in warfare was exercised very much, but a great many of these types of boats were built in Europe, and um, uh, the company here built the first ones for the U.S. Navy. And as a consequence of that success, and perhaps more than anything, because of the uh, great uh, success of Captain Nat in designing boilers and engines, they got to build the earliest uh, seagoing torpedo boats of the U.S. Navy. And uh, one of them was uh, actually a boat originally built in speculation, it was named Stilera. And that was a boat of uh, a little over 60 feet that uh, they constructed with the idea that it might become a torpedo boat, but originally it was a yacht. And uh, there's a very famous incident with that, because in the Hudson River, there was a famous Hudson River steamer called the Mary Powell, which was owned by Jay Gould, one of the um, most prominent uh, members of the business community in Manhattan, and he also owned all the newspapers. And Gould was very proud of the fact that his big steamer, the Mary Powell, was labeled the fastest vessel in the world. It carried passengers every day from Manhattan to Albany. But one spring morning, when they started up the river, there was this small steam yacht near them with Captain Nat at the controls in the stiletto. And I think that, first of all, the stiletto didn't quite catch up, but when Captain Nat cranked down a little bit on the safety valve, they passed the Mary Powell, crossed her bow, slowed down to come back, crossed his stern, and got to Albany 10 minutes ahead of him. Well, Mr. Gould was furious, and uh, nobody had ever heard of the Herald Sauce by that, that time, it was early on. And Gould wrote some very uh, mean uh, uh, complaints in his newspapers about these smart Alex from Rhode Island came down and embarrassed him and proved they had a faster vessel. Well, it didn't cost uh, JB and Captain had anything to do that, and it brought all the people who wanted steam yachts to Bristol to order the steam yachts. So it's a little bit like what the politicians call free advertising, because the company itself never did any advertising. This museum has much more signage than did the Harrisoft Manufacturing Company. I'm told the only sign they had was a little one that said uh, office. And the idea was, which Captain Nat and JB agreed to when they got together was that they would never borrow money, they'd build the business on the profits, they would um, always try to build the best possible product, whatever it took to do that, and uh, they established a wonderful workforce, and that's of course the third element of it, is JB running the business, Captain Nat doing the designing, and these fantastic men who became trained in such a way that they could do a lot of things without supervision. However, before I get into the details of how Captain Nat designed boats, I'd like to give you a little capsule of a day in the life of uh, Nathaniel Green Harrisoff. He did a lot of his designing in the third floor of his house. The house was called the Love Rocks because it's on the corner just down from here, next to what we now call Wally Park, 
And um, outside in the beach there were some big rocks, which were called the Love Rocks, because I suppose it was a nice, uh, obscure place for couples to go to. And so when Captain Nat built the house, he called the house the Love Rocks, and it's still called that. So on the third floor, he had a, a set of rooms, which we have tried our best to replicate in the uh, second floor here, and that's where you'll be invited to come in and view the um, presentation of his models and the uh, replication of his workshop. So he did a lot of his modeling in the evening. His method was not to draw the lines drawing of a prospective vessel in the conventional way, which is to combine on one large sheet of paper three views of a vessel, wherein you could think of it as though the um, side view and top view were portrayed in such a way that you could think of it as slicing a loaf of bread. And each of those slices could represent either a station or, in the case of the Herosofts, a frame space. So in the normal procedure, you would draw in one part of this lines drawing the shape of all these sections. And that would have to agree in the uh, architect's skills with um, uh, plan view of the shape which shows all the water lines, which are the intersections of uh, the surface at each of several different levels. And then from the top view, it would show what's called buttocks, which are uh, slices taken vertically from the center line out. Captain Nat didn't bother with any of that. What he did was he would start out with his mind's eye pretty well set, apparently, with what he was going to do. And he'd make a small sketch of just what a boat might be. And he became so experienced that he could estimate very quickly, leapfrogging the normal naval architect's process, he could estimate the weights and the centers and the required sail area.